During the first years of the Cold War, the United States Air Force's Strategic Air Command had a simple defense strategy. If the conflict ever turned hot, they would have in their ranks fighter and nuclear bomber planes so fast that they would be uncatchable. It was envisioned that these innovative aircraft would be able to dash into the Soviet Union and China territories at speeds and altitudes that enemy missiles wouldn't be able to reach. To achieve this, they needed an incredibly fast plane with a radical design that could give one hell of a show. As an answer to their needs, Convair gave them the world's first operational supersonic bomber, the B-58 Hustler. The Hustler was the model plane for a new era of fantastic aircraft. With its shiny, attention-grabbing armor, sleek delta-wing design, roaring takeoff, and notorious sonic boom, the B-58 was thought to be an ideal projection of American power and strength. Numerous world records were set by B-58s, some of which still stand. But 22% of the built Hustlers were destroyed in unfortunate incidents. Even the most skilled pilots were terrified to fly it, and the Soviet Air Force threatened its future in combat before it even began. In the Hustlers' case, anti-aircraft technology improved faster than its supersonic speed. After an Air Force's generalized bomber study was issued in 1949, Convair, currently known as General Dynamic, submitted several proposals for a delta-wing bomber design. The plane would be powered by three General Electric J-53 turbojet engines and capable of flying faster than 1,000 miles per hour at a range of 3,000 miles. This was an ambitious proposal. U.S. Air Force Captain Chuck Yeager had only broken the sound barrier aboard the Bell X-1 two years prior. But the Air Force was impressed and chose Boeing's MX-1712 and Convair's MX-1626 proposals to go into a phase one study, leaving Curtis, Douglas, Martin, and North American Aviation out of the project. During this phase, Convair developed several changes to the proposal, such as switching the J-53 turbojet engines with four of the newer J-79 models and a redesign of the aircraft body to give it a much narrower fuselage. These modifications made the design for the bomber more apt for supersonic flight and helped to win a tight race against Boeing. When it came time to make a selection, the Air Force reportedly took into consideration that Boeing was already producing the B-52 Strider Fortress and chose Convair's MX-1626 to diversify manufacturers. In February 1953, the Air Force issued a contract to develop Convair's proposal, now formally named the B-58. The B-58 Hustler was a delta-wing aircraft bomber, with four turbojet J-79 General Electric engines hanging from the wings. This supersonic bomber inherited its delta-wing design from earlier Convair projects, such as the XF-92A and the F-102. The innovative aircraft had some sophisticated and extremely modern features, including inertial guidance navigation and bombing systems. They included recorded messages in a woman's voice to warn crew members of flight circumstances. To minimize overheating while in supersonic cruise, Convair engineers designed the B-58's skin out of honeycombed fiberglass in between aluminum and steel plates glued together. This method would later be used in other aircraft like commercial airplanes. Although the B-58 did not have a bomb bay, it could externally carry a single nuclear weapon with a centerline fuel pod over it. Four extra weapons, nuclear or conventional, could be carried on external hardpoints if the fuel pod was taken out. But this degraded the aircraft's range even further, as the area for fuel was already small. These containers could also be used to hold cameras and other miscellaneous equipment. The B-58's WASP waste fuselage was no exception to unconventional innovation. Each of the three crew members, a pilot, a navigator or bombardier, and a defensive systems operator had their own compartments. Separated by equipment, the team passed along notes via a string system that ran along the cabin's main wall. Convair engineers were required to create a unique emergency ejection device, as conventional designs from the era weren't suitable for supersonic speed. After a few years, and a few unfortunate accidents, engineers were able to develop a novelty escape pod. 
It consisted of a protective shell armor that would enclose the seat and control stick with an attached oxygen cylinder. This armor allowed the pilot to continue to fly even when in the pod, allowing him to maneuver into an optimal ejection orientation if possible, and conduct an immediate escape. The capsule could be used as a flotation device if needed, and the crew member could use the shell as a life raft. Also unusual for the period, these innovative ejection systems were tested with live animals, including bears and chimpanzees. The Hustler was relatively small for a bomber, with a length of 95.1 feet and a 56.9 foot wingspan. In comparison, the B-52 was 64 feet long and had a 185 foot wingspan. The bomber's size created one of its most significant weaknesses for a jet designed to infiltrate the seemingly boundless Soviet airspace. Limited fuel loading meant it only had a standard range of 1,740 miles. This would require the Air Force to base the bomber jets in Europe or devote substantial numbers of tankers just for airborne refueling. Despite these limitations, a lot of hope was still placed in the Hustler. The B-58 couldn't only be the best bomber of the U.S. Forces Strategic Air Command. It also had to show that American aerial technology and innovation were the best on the planet. The Hustler's first flight took place on November 11, 1956, from the Convair facilities at Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas. It lasted 38 minutes and reached an altitude of 63,400 feet. This was also the B-58's public debut. 30,000 people watched astonished as the bomber plane lifted off from the ground, admiring the display of design and speed. The Hustler accomplished its first supersonic flight later that month, turning the B-58 into the first operational bomber capable of Mach 2 speed. The sonic boom sound it made in flight became the Hustler's trademark and was widely reported by concerned civilians underneath its flight paths. The B-58 was one of the first aircraft to take advantage of a fundamental piece of knowledge on overcoming drag in supersonic flight. To break the sound barrier, the pilot had to sweep the wings in an angle that made the plane fly within the Mach cone, a tridimensional bow-shaped wave formed around a body flying in the air at supersonic speed. When the wings are within that cone, the airflow around them remains subsonic, allowing for stable flight. The B-58 got its name when Engineering Administrative Supervisor E. Stanton Brown heard about the bomber's performance and said, quote, Sounds like it'll really be a hustler. The name stuck instantly within the engineering department, and eventually the Air Force made it the aircraft's official name. It was also nicknamed the Champion of Champions. In 1964, the CIA determined that the only aircraft capable of intercepting it was the Chinese MiG-21 fish bed, and quote, even then, the chances of a successful hit would be minimal. Although the B-58 was undoubtedly an engineering wonder, the Hustler suffered from an alarmingly high accident rate, costly routine maintenance, and an obsolete mission profile. In total, the Hustler only had an operational life of less than a decade. Even with its exceptional performance, the B-58 was only deployed in two operational units. One was at Carswell Air Force Base, and the other was Indiana's Bunker Hill Air Force Base. Just like all Delta Wing planes, it was challenging to fly. It was a machine that demanded respect and attention, but the Hustler's biggest problem was one that engineering improvements couldn't solve. Parallel to the B-58's development at Convair, the Soviet Air Forces developed a high-altitude air defense system built around a surface-to-air missile with command guidance. The S-75 Dvina, known to NATO as the SA-2 Guideline, could reach thousands of feet higher than the Hustler's maximum operating altitude and could strike at speeds faster than any manned jet. Convair's attempt at a solution was to fly lower, but this also meant that the B-58 would have to fly slower, given the denser air at lower altitudes. This defeated the primary purpose of the Hustler's design, its ability to reach Mach 2 speeds. Unfortunately, the plane handled lower speeds poorly. 26 out of 116 produced Hustlers were lost to accidents, resulting in a total loss rate of 22.4% over its service life. 
Convoy maintenance crews reported that for every hour the B-58 flew, it took 35 hours of repairs. The Hustler was a costly program. In today's dollars, a single B-58 would cost $98 million. Some of the test pilots even quit over the constant threat of crashes. They didn't want to risk their lives over such a significant possibility of disaster. Still, the Hustler was very popular with others. Crews around the country wanted to try it out. Not many people got the experience of flying faster than the speed of sound. It was said that being able to tame a Hustler could build a pilot's career. If a bomber could be judged only by its coolness factor, the Hustler would still be in service. A technology is sometimes faster than Mach 2 speed. With a broad set of flaws, price, and several operational difficulties, the B-58 bomber, which was designed for the sole purpose of delivering high-altitude nuclear strikes, had virtually no chance to remain in ranks for a long time. The B-58 never saw combat. In 1970, the Air Force Strategic Air Command retired the Hustler. Political infighting and budget restraints plagued the Convair project since the very beginning. In the end, it just became too expensive to keep funding due to its shocking accident rate. Just as Nixon's presidency started, and America neared a stalemate in Vietnam, a new trend of multipurpose aircraft capable of low-altitude flying began. The Hustler became obsolete. Nonetheless, it is still a remarkable and well-known aircraft. The Hustler won many races, including the Bendix Trophy, Francis Blériot Cup, the McKay Trophy, and the Harmon Trophy. Perhaps ironically, it was the only bomber to ever receive the Thompson Trophy, which tested low-altitude flying and maneuverability at high speeds. The aircraft set multiple world records, some of which are still unmatched today. To quote Major Howard Bialis, lead pilot of the crew that flew the Hustler to win the Thompson Trophy, quote, Am I proud to be associated with this great aircraft? You bet your life. Would I do it again in a heartbeat? Was I ever scared? Always. Always.